All right, we're ready to start the uh, breakdown process. Uh, I'm wearing this on my head because uh, the battery ran out, so I have like a little phone charger here hooked up to the camera so we can still give you two perspectives here uh, during the breakdown if needed. Sorry if it looks a little silly. Before we start the breakdown, just a couple things I want to mention that I probably didn't mention earlier but should have. Uh, one is this little vent up here. It's pretty handy, uh, especially if you're cooking and you want some of that heat to escape out. You just kind of turn it up like this. It raises it up and turn it the other way, it comes down. Um, if you forget to lower it before you collapse the thing during breakdown, don't worry because you can reach inside and actually reach this crank even if the, the, the roof is totally down. I know that because we've done it once or twice. All right, a couple other things I want to go over real quick. Uh, these uh, jugs will be inside for you. We may have mentioned them earlier, but they're super handy and they work really well like on the side of a picnic table. You just kind of turn the, turn the side down like that with water and it sort of like becomes a little sink on the side of a picnic table to wash your hands, uh, do the dishes, maybe things like that. So they're really handy. One's a little smaller than the other. I want to say this is maybe two, two gallons and this is probably three or maybe this is three and this is five. Uh, I forgot, but they're a little different. And they're great for hauling water again when you uh, fill it up from the faucet, you need to put it in the water tank. Uh, one more thing, the, we have these lights up here. I didn't mention them. Um, hopefully they're still in place because there's Velcro to the ceiling. Um, they're pretty handy. They can also turn around and swivel to really kind of focus on certain parts. Like if you're cooking right there, you just want limited light. Uh, they're pretty bright at night, believe it or not. There's a couple different settings if you want to keep them on dim. Uh, if you notice the batteries are out, just let me know so I can uh, replace them. But there's one, two, three. We may even put a few more here because uh, we, we, we like them. Uh, I think that's about all the things that I kind of forgot to mention earlier, but just uh, stuff you know. All the uh, utensils and stuff, are uh, in here. Pots, pans, everything you see in the pictures uh, on the website should be in here. Uh, we'll probably give you fresh trash bags, maybe even a clean sponge, maybe some clean towels, along with uh, the mattress covers that we'll wash and make sure you have a clean set. I do recommend sleeping bags just because they're, they're just, they feel like camping and they're really convenient. If you prefer to bring you know, bed sheets and blankets, that's fine, uh, but that's on you. So however you sleep best, uh, you're welcome to do. Uh, FYI, that bed is a queen size and this is a full size. Queen, full, parents, kids. And this folds into a bed. Um, when you flatten it out and lower the table down, you just put the mattresses together. I know this uh, pad here is not one of the original ones. I'm not sure why it got changed out uh, before we bought it, but it just did. We may change that out for too long here, so, but it's, it flattens out. You can easily sleep a kid, maybe even two over there. All right, let's talk about the uh, breakdown. I'm not going to actually do everything as far as the breakdown because some of it I just can't, and some of it I don't need to actually demonstrate, but we just want to go down the list here because it's the same list that you have. Number one, pour the bucket of dirty sink water onto fire. This is the bucket that's outside um, catching the water that comes out of the sink. Um, again, it's my understanding it's legal to pour that onto the fire um, to dispose of it. Uh, you want to turn off the propane cylinder. And what I mean is like the top knob, just like on your gas grill at home, close that. And I would also recommend at least loosening the uh, attachment screw on knob thing. Uh, you could still leave it on there, you know, just kind of loosely, but I recommend kind of detaching it as much as possible. Also make sure just for future use that this black knob on this little stove line is flipped to the off position. That way when the next person uses it, um, it won't just all of a sudden start spewing out gas in case they decide to perk up, hook up the propane tank uh, first. Okay, interior lights, we talked about those. We want to uh, turn those off. Um, if you remember, if you can, although they're actually sticking pretty well, um, it says remove from ceiling and place in drawer. Um, that'd be great if you remember. If you don't, that's okay, because they seem to be sticking on there pretty well. Water pump, we talked about this earlier, but you want to make sure this switch is down there in the off position. It's right above uh, the fuse box, which you don't need to worry about the fuse box. And make sure the thermostat is slid all the way to the left, just so it's in the off position. Um, we talked about this earlier, but um, in case you kind of skip through it, it's important to, to understand this because you want to definitely dump out all your excess water uh, before you take off. So what you do is just move this little cushion up here, actually probably both of these, lift up this one, and you see the water tank right there. Again, the spout is uh, that little white spout there towards the bottom. and. 
it's, it's always hard for me to remember if it's in the on or off position or the draining position, whatever you want to call it. But if there's water in here, still, you want to flip it around. It'll drain right out through the floor. And that's perfectly legal because, again, this is clean water in that tank. So if it goes into the ground, there's no problem. You can even you could probably even leave that open if it's taken a long time. Uh, if you don't remember to close it, it won't be the end of the world. It just means the next person might actually lose some water when they're trying to fill it up. Um, but that's important to do so you don't slosh a, wa a bunch of uh, water around on your, uh, on your way back. Okay, carefully place everything in the appropriate bins, cabinets, and doors. Do your best to just kind of make it all fit to where it's not going to slide around too much and, you know, rip up the floor, put dents in the sides. You know, traveling is, is, is kind of a harsh process on a lot of this stuff. So um, the more we can kind of secure everything from sliding around, uh, the better. Clean off counters and floors, please. Um, in other words, return it the same way you picked it up. There's a bunch of wipes, you know, those little uh, sanitation wipe things. Just take it, wipe it off the counter. You'd be surprised how much dust just kind of builds up from just having the windows open when you're out at the campground. Uh, the wind blows through, it just carries a lot of stuff with it. Um, it's not the Ritz-Carlton. It won't be the Ritz-Carlton when you, when you pick it up and it won't be the Ritz-Carlton when you drop it off. You're going camping, I know there's gonna be some residual dirt left behind on the floors, it's impossible to get it up. That's okay, you're not gonna get assessed a cleaning fee for that kind of stuff, but just make the effort to uh, wipe off whatever you can, run a broom through it, and please don't leave a bunch of greasy, disgusting pots and pans and silverware in there, because if we have to clean those, then you might be assessed at least part of a cleaning fee. So again, return it the same way you picked it up. Uh, okay, so now we're ready for the actual breakdown process. Um, all the windows right now are zipped up, both the plastic seals and the drapes covered. This is what you're going to want to do. Again, uh, when, when we're breaking it down, we want to make sure everything is as flattened out as possible because when the roof comes down, if there's a big bunched up drape or um, curtain or something like that, it may just make it that much harder to get all the way down. So you just want to just zip up all the windows put all the uh, drapes flat. We'll do these as well once we take the, uh, the bed areas down. Okay, first thing you wanna do as far as the breakdown process is unzip these four long zippers that are over the braces. This one's already done. So this is up. That also means uh, you're kind of, kind of pushing out the flap right there. This one. Never really got done right in the first place. Uh, and some air will start coming through here, obviously, because we're kind of opening it up a little bit. But these are the zippers we're talking about. All right, again, this lets the material kind of flow a bit more freely when we're breaking it down so nothing is pulled too tight. If it's pulled too tight, it's gonna rip. So you want the material to be loose. Okay, so that's the long zippers near the four braces. Okay, we're gonna uh, work on the door now. We're gonna detach the Velcro strips from both sides of the door here. Stand by, I'll be right back. I'm gonna zip in, un un velcro these. Okay, so I think we're now ready for the door. Uh, when it comes to uh, putting the door up, this is maybe the most frustrating part sometimes of the breakdown process. I think it's great to give yourself some extra room. So I would actually fold this table up a little bit or just get it out of the way. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and just kinda Kind of break this down. Might as well, because it's didn't do that momentarily anyway. There is a Velcro strap for this table. I'm gonna wrap around the two legs.
All right, really good. Okay, so here comes the door. Again, we're creating some space just to give us a little more room to work with here. All right, so we've got the, uh, the flaps, the Velcro all off of the door now. We're ready to kind of put the door back on the ceiling. Um, first thing I'm gonna do here is uh, put this bungee cord around the door. It's hard to explain, but basically, if it's allowed to kind of dangle freely, then the frame that's around the actual door will kind of separate and put a lot of stress here. Don't worry about it, but this is important. Just please do that, okay? Uh, I wanna go ahead and turn all these knobs the right way so the door's not gonna flap out. We're gonna undo these up here, and we're gonna move this metal piece down there to kind of free it up, okay? So now we're ready to actually raise the door. So this part's gonna more or less just kind of snap out. All right, it's gonna come out of the bottom. You'll let it dangle, it's okay. Again, we, get, we have the, uh, the bungee cord on now, so the door's not flying open. We're gonna raise it, it helps to have two people here, but you can do it with one. We're gonna push it up against the wall there, making sure it can be as, as flush as possible. Okay, again, this is why the table is gone, so I have some extra room to see here. So what I recommend, hopefully the GoPro's picking us up pretty well, is you slide it on to the left one, and then put the right one in place to hold it up. So again, we're sliding it on to this one, and then turning this one. And the door looks really, really good right now. It's nice and solid in place. I don't think it's going anywhere. All right, so that's probably the, the toughest part. If you get the door back together in one piece, you're doing pretty well. Where'd the instructions go? Okay, the dining table, pretty simple. You're basically just gonna collapse the, uh, the top of it, kind of like an ironing board. We've placed it over here just so it would be out of the way. There are some Velcro strips underneath uh, the table right there and some corresponding strips down on there. So you just want to kind of rest it gently right in the middle. You'll feel it kind of connect to the Velcro and you're good. And then just lay these cushions down in the it's not an exact science here. Just put them where you more or less think they will line up nicely. So that's the table. After the table, um, if you're using the mattress covers that we'll uh, provide for you, go ahead and just take those off the mattresses. And uh, you can just place them on the floor near the dining table. Again, we're gonna take those out, so it's not a huge deal where you put those. All right, we're ready to lower the bed frames on both sides. Uh, we're just working backwards here, doing all the same stuff. So we'll do this one right here. I'm gonna use the same method, kind of a little lobster claw, uh, crab claw, and just kind of put my fingers on this side, kind of squeeze it. This thing will come down, and we just kind of, let me move these. The bed frame will just more or less fall on its own. If possible, make sure that the, uh, it's not pinching the tent material. And of course, the storage place for these is back under the mattress where they're not gonna go anywhere. I'll do the same thing with the other side. Coming down, so we think. There we go. Make sure the material's clear. All right, very good. Stick this under the mattress. And like we talked about when uh, setting up, we'll close the curtains on both sides. All right, so now we're gonna, uh, we're gonna fold the sink back down. And I'm gonna get a towel here just in case because sometimes um, when you fold the sink back down, there's a little bit of residual water that's stuck in the line that comes down. So I like to kind of have it, have it ready. I may even put it right down there because there's usually a few drips. It's not gonna be a huge deal. Just please clean it up. All right, so the sink is gonna come over. 
And when it gets, when it gets fairly low, we gotta put this bar down. Remember this, I can't put it down now because it's gonna hit the counter, but when it gets low enough, we're gonna make sure we can put that bar in place. And that's important because we don't wanna let the, uh, we don't wanna let the sink just kinda hang, hang there unsupported. We always wanna uh, let it be supporting something else. I don't, I'll lift it up real quick just to kinda see if there's much water down there from the sink. I doubt it. Nothing. All right. All right. So the sink's down. Metal pole is touching on the floor. We're gonna put the stove in the upside down sink compartment. As long as that metal bar is down, it's gonna support this just fine. So the stove is in the upside down compartment. Okay, at this point, um, the inside is pretty well broken down. We wanna, make, we wanna look around and make sure that nothing is above the height of this mattress. For example, these things are in a bad spot. I wanna put these on the floor somewhere. These are so light and flexible and not really damaging. I usually put these right around there. They may slide around a little bit. Trash can I'll end up putting under the table, I think. Uh, but those are a good place for those. You know, check all your belongings, make sure you got them. Fire extinguisher, which is not the one that fits there. It's a little bit more of a heftier one. We'll put this back in the maintenance thing, along with this funnel. This is the battery cover. We'll plug this out of here, because we'll use that in a minute. extra piece of trash there and I think we're pretty good we'll slide these rem remaining wooden boards under the sink it's a good good place for these uh, the broom if you wouldn't hurt to sweep it one more time because as you're probably cleaning up your feet probably got it a little dirtier we'll put this towel we'll need this in just a second so we'll throw this right on the floor should be fine there. I'll probably put the trash can under here. That's a great spot for it. Again, we're going to be putting some more stuff like those bars and the brass braces under here in a second. So as long as you leave yourself some room to kind of slide that around, you should be just fine. And if you need to rearrange stuff once you get it all broken down, that's okay too. All right, so now we're ready to go work on the outside. All right, we're outside the camper. I don't need my GoPro anymore because it's all pretty easy stuff. We're just working backwards here, going through the steps. Right now, we want to unhook those shock cords or those bungees that are underneath each of the bed platforms. I'll do the back one first. Okay, I'll do the front one over here. Okay, and I'm going to undo the Velcro. You can stay there. And just lift the corners over to where they're just kind of up and we'll be we'll be tucking all this in in a second Let me make sure this bungee cord is not too stressed we'll do the same thing on the front All right, now we're gonna uh, take out these black bars because no one's going back inside. No one's using the beds anymore. Same way we put them on. I'm just gonna put my shoulder under it and just lift up just a hair, enough for it to uh, come out of that slot. 
gently lower it down. Same thing, push up a little bit, comes out, gently lower it. I'm gonna put these under the kitchen table. By the way, as you'll notice, even I'm following the instructions because even when I try to do it, just kind of based on memory, chances are I'm going to forget something. So even I go through these pretty much step by step every single time because there's a lot there's a lot of steps to remember. So now we're going to push both both of these bed platforms into the traveling position. Kind of gently lift up. Don't push it too fast. There may be some tip material caught in there. Just kind of go, go slow here. I'm gonna kind of, kind of spread it out a little bit. You'll know it's in place. As you'll hear that, we'll be tucking all this in in a second. Let's just get these two platforms in. Very smooth, very nice. Tighten this up. Okay. We're ready to take the battery off of the front. You're not going to get electrocuted here. You just kind of take these screws off. Excuse me, take the nuts off. Put the nuts back on. Okay, we're gonna kind of gently tie these cords up just like they were before. Kind of put them in place. One of them maybe a little longer than the other. The point here is just we don't want them to really, really be dragging on the ground. All right. Looks good. They're not going anywhere. The battery, we'll lift it up by the handles here. Again, it's heavy, so be careful. And I pretty much keep this right inside the door here. Because remember, it's... It's one of the first things that you take out, so it's okay to just leave it right inside the door. It's super heavy, so it's not gonna go anywhere. We're making sure we leave room for the brick and the, uh, the, the wheel chocks right at the door, but the battery can be just inside that. Okay, looks good. Okay, we are ready to take the two braces off of the opposite corners, remember those? You just kinda, kinda wiggle it off right around those little indented parts. Gently lower it. Again, these are the parts down here, so you just kinda, kinda wiggle it off. Okay, we'll 
we'll put these kind of one on top of the other and put these under the kitchen table. All right, now we've got our crank and it's time to lower it. Um, I'm gonna say this now, and you'll, I'll probably say this two or three more times as we're doing it. You wanna um, make sure that you're paying really close attention to the tent material as the roof is coming down. We're gonna stop it like two or three times at least and just continue to kind of tuck in and flatten out the tent material. Number one, you don't want it to get bunched up because that means it's harder for it to come down. And number two, you don't want to have it um, hanging out because when the roof comes down, it'll pinch it, it'll tear it, and tent material is uh, not cheap uh, to fix. So we're gonna go down probably a couple of feet at a time and then stop and walk around it each time. So we'll go ahead and start coming down. All right, it's a good point to uh, stop and tuck it all in. You're really just kind of pushing towards the middle. That's pretty much the rule of thumb here. Flatten it out. Pushing it towards the middle. And again, it's gonna fall, but we're gonna keep doing it. And again, because we've undone, remember those four zippers in the corners? Because we've taken those zippers back up, so they're undone, it's got a lot more flexibility to uh, kind of move around. You may hear some what sounds like ripping sounds. It's probably the Velcro that kind of comes in contact. But just be, be careful. We'll go down a little farther. All right, same thing. Pushing it all in place. You may have heard a little section fall there. Sometimes the, these braces will stick a little bit, so a little section will come down. Spreading it out flattening it out, pushing it towards the middle. You can't do it enough times. I should say you can't do it too many times. Looking pretty good. Probably Probably stop it one more time. Just to get it that last few inches or so. This part right on the edge, you don't have to really tuck up. You can just more, more or less tuck it in, including that little black strap.
this green cable can be a little bit of a pain because it's easy to forget about. But once you get real low, go ahead and just uh, try and tuck this in so it doesn't get smashed. We're looking pretty good here. I think I'm gonna go the rest of the way except for maybe about an inch here. One more, just looking around, looking around. All right, I think we're pretty good. So we'll go the rest of the way. What's that? Good catch. So one of our little cords here popped out. I didn't even see it. I would have seen that eventually because we will do a full walk around. But I'm glad we saw it now, it saves us a little time. Okay, so once it's down basically all the way, you may still need to uh, give it a little push, and you may not. So right now we're pretty good because this clip's gonna go on just fine. And if it's, uh, you can actually move these a little to the side to side if you need to get that. These are adjustable if something just doesn't seem right or if it just comes loose or somebody, one of the kids are playing with it, you can actually tighten this up and that'll make it longer or shorter as needed. If it's not 100% lined up, right in the middle it's okay if it's got a you know a quarter inch or half an inch one side or the other that's okay so i think that's where we're at right now which is okay yeah i'll do all four clips one oh you know what look at this i messed that up Yeah. A little bit more. All right. Okay. Now we should be good. Okay, good. One. Two. See on this side over here, it was up just a little bit, just kind of kind of give it a little push. And that will get us the rest of the way. Three and four. So we got the clips all up. At this point, the directions say to raise the stabilizers halfway, but that's actually the start of the next video which is how to hook it up to your vehicle. Now, I do want to say that once you get to this point, as well as before you drive off, it's good to go ahead and just do a quick walk around. And I have a feeling that there's probably a couple of things. For example, this bucket and this hose that need to go back into the maintenance cabinet. bucket can just lie on the ground and it'll be fine okay and with this you guys are ready for the video to help you hook it up to your vehicle